guys, it's Danny. All right, today we have a bit of an impromptu video. I was not planning on filming this morning. It's super early. You might hear my voices. Not woken up yet. Where's my coffee? Okay, this will help. Okay, so as you can see today, we're gonna work with a Vanda orchid. I did something, I discovered something, and I thought, you know what? I might as well film this because it's not every day that I manage to break a Vanda. <laughs> Whoopsie! Anyway, before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up learning something new. It really helps the video in the mysterious world of the algorithm. Leave me a comment and hey, why not subscribe? I post three times a week. Even when I don't intend to post, I post. All right, so let's talk about this little orchid. This is my Pereirara Bangkok Sunset. It is, if not my oldest orchid, one of the oldest. I have it for eight years or so already. It's a joy to grow. It's a smaller type of Vanda. It blooms every year. The blooms are absolutely gorgeous. It's one of my favorites. So as some of you might know, my Vandas are currently residing outside. They didn't really enjoy this year because it was a little too hot, but generally speaking, they are okay. They're very heat tolerant. And every few days, I do inspect them to see if everything is okay. Well, today I was inspecting this one and I saw, peeking through the medium, and I'll get you in closer so you see what I mean, I saw what I immediately recognized as a keiki, but only the top of the leaves. So the keiki was growing from somewhere deep inside the pot. Now, this orchid is actually a little taller than what you see. It has a bit of stem inside the pot, but that stem does not have any more leaves. It looks kind of dry. I thought it was dry, I just left it for anchoring purposes. So anyway, there is about 20 centimeters of stem inside the potting mix. So what I determined was that the keiki was potentially buried 20 centimeters inside the pot. Now, for those of you who use inches, that's about 10 inches or so. So I thought, well, this orchid needs repotting. I need to save that little keiki. Imagine having two of these beauties. And well, in my attempt to remove the roots from the clay pot, which is not glazed, I did a boo-boo. You know how I always say grab the orchid from the base as low as you can go? Well, I did that and look at that. I broke the stem. Now, mind you, the stem is already super, super thin. It doesn't look anything like this. So breaking the stem is much easier in this instance than if I would try to break the stem here. It is super, super thin. It literally snapped off. And I'll give you a close up. You'll see what I mean. So I thought, well, this complicates the situation a little bit, particularly because my orchid has a flower spike. I don't suspect this will affect it, but I decided to take you along because there are some things that I will do. Additionally, I'm not just gonna get this out and put it in a different pot because the stem, as you will see, is a little bit live. So we need to make sure that we seal it. So I'm gonna show you how I'll do that. And I'm also gonna save the little keiki. You'll see it looks a little ghostly, but that's absolutely fine. So very interesting morning today, right? Well, let's just get to work and see what we can do for this orchid. All right, so first and foremost, I do need to remove this orchid from its pot, which I kind of already did. How I did it, even though the outcome was this, was just grab the orchid as close to the base as possible and just try to wiggle it first, then try to remove and detach the roots from the sides of the pot, which I did pretty successfully. And eventually the orchid came loose and I managed to pull it up. When I pulled it up, actually the stem broke. So there was a problem with the stem anyway. And this is what I have left. Not a whole lot of damage, to be fully honest, it could be worse. You can always have some root damage whenever you use unglazed clay pots, or glazed for that matter. Good morning. Did you poop today? I hope you did, so you don't poop on my lap. Are you okay? Okay, go back. So let's gently remove this medium from around the roots because most of the roots, if not all of the roots are actually coming from this side of the stem. This part, you'll see when we clean it up, it doesn't actually have way too many roots, if at all. I have to detangle the situation just to separate the two sides. There we are. We have one side of the plant which has the bulk of the root system and the other side which does still have some roots. They just look very, very old, right? Well, we'll see what we can keep. 
because I have a feeling that Kiki doesn't actually have roots. So we're gonna put this to the side for now. We are going to have to seal off this wound since it's not dried. And to do that, I am actually going to use hot glue. So I'm gonna let this heat up while we work a little bit on the cakey because it takes a few minutes. And let's see what we have here. So here is the stem. You can see how really not good looking it is. I completely thought it was dry, but no, the cakey is actually sprouting from way below. Oh my goodness. Now, one thing I'm sure you're noticing is the color of the cakey. It is yellow. Now, this does not mean it is rotten or it's sick or anything of the sorts. No, it simply did not receive light. So the chlorophyll pigment was not allocated. This will absolutely green up when it will start to receive light. And actually, the top leaf at the tip does have some green. Let me show you. There you go. It is a lot greener. Well, this is the side that I actually saw. It's the side that started to receive light. Everything else will start to green up when it will receive light. But I hope you can see the stem. You would not say it's still functional, right? Well, surprise, it is. <laughs> or at least part of it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean this up and just get to the bottom of it. I'm not gonna keep the entire stem. I'm not gonna keep the entirety of the root system because it's not looking all that great. But I will have to decide what exactly I'm going to keep. Okay, so in the meantime, let's seal off the stem. Traditionally, people use wax. I just don't have any wax. I don't even have candles because I have so many birds. So what I like to use is hot glue. Hot glue works just as well. And it will create a great little seal here. There we go. Glad my hot glue gun still works. So what I did was obviously to seal the breaking point, but I did drag the glue a little further up just so water doesn't seep in from above. It will seep in eventually. And yeah, I should have removed this dried bit. Why didn't I? Danny, why didn't you? I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna place hot glue again. So yeah, it's a good idea to remove everything dry from the area if you have anything. Okay, I'm good now. I'm gonna let it cool down and afterwards I will pot it up. Now I'm just gonna address the kinky. So here is what I'm left with after cleaning everything up. You can see I still have some good roots here. I cut away some of the roots which were still around but they weren't very healthy. This is the very bottom of the stem. These roots are more than eight years old. You can imagine, oh my goodness. They do have branches though, so I left everything that had brand new branches. See, they even have growing tips. Really, really interesting. I was totally not expecting this. You look at the stem and you think, oh, well, that looks very dry. And it might still be. Maybe a portion here is dry, but a portion at the base remained alive because there were roots here, I don't know. So this is what I'm left with. I'm not gonna keep everything. I'm going to remove the stem above. There's no point in keeping that. I'm interested in the roots. Have a, mm, nope, not this one. I keep this one for the dirty jobs. I have brand new tools from Repot Me. They send these things for me for videos, so I'm gonna use them. What I will do is cut the stem above the cakey. I don't wanna cut the roots, so I'm gonna cut above the roots here. It's uh, still viable. Wow, oh my goodness, color me impressed, wow. Hey, you know what, let's seal this one up. Is my glue still liquid? Yes it is. I'm gonna completely seal off this cut that I made here. And in this way, it will be protected from pathogens. Mind you though, it has been in the medium for so long and nothing happened to it. But since I created a wound here, yeah, it's better to seal it up. Right, so I'm gonna let this solidify as well and just search for some pots for both of these guys. I'm gonna pot them separately actually. Alrighty, so I got here two pots. I hope the orchid will fit in this. If it doesn't, I'm gonna get a bigger pot, the one from Repot Me, but I would like it to fit in here because I wanna put it in one of the shelves behind me because they look so pretty. They have those really pretty barina lights, which I think will enhance the coloration of the blooms so much. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. I'm just gonna put it on the south side, but I hope it does. So let's start with this one because the stem had a chance to dry out, or actually the glue dried out. Just removing some bits which were excessive. 
This is the good part with hot glue, you can actually remove it quite easily from most surfaces. There we go. So let's see, this pot is about the same size as that clay pot. How much residue do I still have left? A lot. Just making a test here. Oh yeah, perfect. This makes me so happy, you have no idea. It's the little things in life, such as the market fitting its pot. <laughs> that makes me happy. Right, so following the same drill, sphagnum moss at the bottom, bark chips all around. Oh no, I'm out of bark chips. I need to bring another bag. I'm too lazy. Now Birdie's up. She heard me on the hallway and she thinks I'm gonna come wake her up. But no, I still have some work. It's okay, fiance will wake her up. By the way, Birdie is Kylie, that's her nickname, and she is so sweet. She is super talky for a conure. Wow, she picks up stuff really fast. What she's doing currently is singing. She has the vibrato, she has everything. I don't know where she picked it up. Well, maybe she picked it up for me. So maybe that's her interpretation of me singing, but she goes like, la, <laughs> something like that. Very distinct vibrato. It's the funniest thing. It is so funny. I have never heard a parrot do that vibrato. Well, I heard a collectus. There is an eclectus video on YouTube with an eclectus singing, you're my sunshine, my only sunshine, you know, and he has the vibrato, but it's an eclectus. You would expect a bird like that to be able to imitate human voice, but not Birdie, Birdie's a conure. They have their own little voices and they're not known to be very talented speakers. Well, mine is, she's so talented. I'm going to enter her in a singing competition for birds. <laughs> Why is it with me this morning? I do all sorts of boo-boos. I have not finished my coffee and it's late already. Oh no, what is wrong with me? <laughs> you see this root? I want to pull it back with this. Never mind. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Oh gosh, I hope the camera is filming. It is filming. Audio okay? It is okay. <laughs> My little blowtorch fell into the wet sphagnum moss because why not? It's one of those days, huh? Alrighty then, I know to be careful. Don't, oh my God. This was about to fall as well. All right, so we can see my orchid is a little deep in the pot. Well, don't worry, it can be lifted up, of course. So I'm gonna keep it at the level where I want it to be, not where it actually sits because that's a little bit too low. The stem is not all that high anymore. So I'm gonna keep it here and continue to add medium. Yep, that looks very pretty. And when it's gonna be in bloom, the colors will look amazing. Just you wait and see. So pretty, so happy it fits here. I need to clean the leaves a little bit. They're a little dusty, but it's okay. All right, time for the cakey. Now, since it's so tiny, I really did not want to occupy too much space with it, but the root system is kind of big. So I'll have to use this pot just so that all of the roots fit in. Yep, I think it's just such a waste. I wish it were half, but okay, what to do? I'm gonna use this one and the same potting medium and style. All right, so what I did was I actually filled up this pot halfway. I don't know, I just feel weird wasting so much materials and so much space when this cakey will not spend a whole lot of time in this pot. Hopefully, fingers crossed, once it starts to create roots of its own, it's out of here. It's separated from the stem. I'm gonna pot it separately or even with the mother plant. I don't know, we'll see what I decide. But for now, it does not have any type of roots. That's why I kept the stem and the root system because if I would just separate it, it would not survive, most probably. Now, you can see how yellow it is. Well, guess what? This video will be published next week from when I'm filming this, most probably, because I have other stuff planned. So I'm gonna give you an update exactly on the day that I post the video and you'll see it will already be a lot greener. You can already see the top of the first leaf is already kind of green. This is what was sticking out out of the medium. This is what I saw and it was receiving light. That's why it greened up. So I assure you this little thingy, as pretty as it looks like, 
Doesn't it look like a completely variegated plant? Well, it's not okay to remain like this, it needs to photosynthesize, but it will green up faster than you can say, holy moly, look at that, it's green. <laughs> so yeah, I will actually pick this up on the day that I upload the video. And for today, I'm gonna try to be chill. Maybe I'm not gonna work too much because I'm having one of those clumsy days and I don't wanna find out just how clumsy I am. So I'm gonna insert the update right here. And here we are, this is about five days later and look at my keiki, it's already quite a lot greener and the red pigmentation that you see, it's actually anthocyanin. This is a type of orchid that does indeed produce quite a lot of anthocyanin, even when fully green. It usually has these purplish freckles as a default. And well, this pigment has a role in protecting the foliage from intense light. I did not keep this little plant in sunshine. I kept it under the grow lights, but it was enough to initiate the anthocyanin, which is absolutely normal. So there we have it, it's greening up and it's looking very well. Bonus, the mother plant appears to not have been shocked in any way by the repot and the breaking of the stem. Excuse Joey. She's having a concert and I am interrupting her actually. Uh, but as you can see, the uh, flowers or actually the buds are starting to open. Everything is A-OK. -okay. Alrighty guys, so that said, that's about it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed your time and learned something new. I hope you have a great week. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye!